Okay, so this is a long-awaited review of these Ray-Ban Meta Glasses, which I've had now for several months. I think Ugh, uh, ever since they came out. No, no, I take that back. I've had them probably from since at least May, April and May, I think. Um, but I love them. Sh short story long, I love them. Um, and the reason why I wanted to make this video now is because I just, uh, it, it's, this morning I used it for two things. One silly, one actually very helpful, and, and a pardon the glare. Um, in fact, let me do this, take them off. Uh, um, the first one was um, I was at Home Depot and I was looking at some plants um, perennials and uh, celosia is a plant that I love but it's an annual and I just don't like planting annuals and I asked if asked Meta if I could transplant celosia into indoors in the fall but I totally screwed up the prompt and what it did is it asked it told me it could create a poem for me about Celosia in the fall. And I thought that was pretty darn cool. And I turned around and I said, you know, hey Meta, can you create me a haiku about a beautiful fall day? And it created a really, really, really nice haiku. And uh, I, in fact, I made a little a reel about that on Facebook. And as I was driving away, it, in my neighborhood, <clears throat> there's a really nice path that goes uh, that cuts across Alexandria. And one of the things that it does is it has this, I call it a creepy tunnel. And it is, it's a creepy tunnel that goes under the main freeway highway that goes from, that cuts through Northern Virginia into DC. It's called 395. And, uh, it's been shut down for quite a while now. And it's called the Holmes Run Trail Project. And, I was just always curious about like, wh how long is this going to take? What is this and how long is this going to take? I just dropped the case. And as I'm driving past this, I see the official name of the project. So I asked Meta, hey, what is the Holmes Rail Trail Restoration Project? And it told me, it gave me all these details that I've been wondering about, frankly, for years. And it's just something, one of these silly things, and this is the beauty of AI, and having the convenience of utilizing it in something like your glasses and now our Apple intelligence with iOS 9, 18 point whatever it's going to be, is that it allows you to access information much, much, much easier and more conveniently and quicker and everything else. And that's the reason why I wanted these glasses is because I wanted to learn how to utilize the prompts for AI. Just like this morning when I screwed up the prompt about Celestia, um, that's the cool thing about this is that for a relatively low price, uh, three hundred and fifty dollars for the polarized transition lenses that it got that you can't even get on in Ray Bans period Wayfarers period, I was able to get my feet wet in the whole AI process. So that's it. <clears throat> Here are some some of the other cool features of. Uh, the glasses um, is when you have a good internet connection. That's that's the that's the big big thing, is that um, this is what sucks about living in the United States. And you know I use Verizon, so it's the biggest carrier, the largest penetration of any other cell carrier. As far as I know, it might have changed since I've been a Verizon customer for 15 years now. But the problem is is that. Uh, when you try to use glasses or something that needs to be connected to the internet constantly, you find out how many gaps you have in your cell coverage. And so that's a frustrating thing of using these glasses. And, and frankly, anything is, is that if, you, if, if it's on a, win, on a moment's notice, when you're just walking about, when, when you have to stop your, and pick, pick up your phone and, and enter text and or, or ask a prompt or Google something, you, it, it kind of drags out the process a little bit and you're a little bit more patient about it, if that makes sense. But when you have on your glasses and you're talking to yourself and you're, you're, you're conscious about, you're self-conscious about um, talking to yourself in public, you kind of want your answer discreetly and quickly as opposed to, you know, typing something in and that could take 
as long as it takes until it gets you the information. But with this, it kind of adds a, it raises your level of expectation of the expediency and um, just the whole experience. You want it instantaneous, and that's kind of being unfair to 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 the to the uh, to, to the peripheral. And and that said. Using these and having that expect that high expectation of instantaneous uh, instantaneous information is kind of unfair because it's not the hardware that's the problem; it's the infrastructure. And until we get South Korean internet speeds, which we deserve, um, that's always going to be a problem. So that said, having the ability to ask Meta, I think it was it was their software update 6.0 that allowed it to use the glass, the images to actually um, AI search images. So you could tell, hey Meta, what am I looking at? And if you've got a good internet connection, it'll tell you what you're looking at. Um, it might not be the answer you want, but it'll tell you um, that is in fact you're looking at a such and such car. Um, as opposed to you want to know something else about the car, but you can be, that's where your prompts come in. It's like, well, tell me more about such and such car. Or and, and in fact, I was driving past, uh, walking past an Arabian. My wife was asking, how much does a Arabian pickup truck cost? And I, I guessed $80,000. And I was looking at a Arabian. I asked it, uh, T, uh, T1 or whatever they're called, and asked it, like, you know, how much does a Arabian T1 cost or whatever the model number is for their pickup truck? And it says, um, you'll have to consult. Rivian for the pricing. Like, that's fair enough. Um, in that vein, I've asked, I asked the other day when the iPhone 16s were announced, the Apple Watches were announced, I asked it for the pricing for that and it couldn't give it to me, which is fair because there's just a bunch of different models. Um, but again, it's the convenience as long as you have a good cell connection, data connection, that makes it just really, really fun. Um, again, your expectations are high and your tolerance is low as far as when it doesn't give you the answer you want as quickly as you want. So what else can I tell you about it? Um, oh, Fit, you know, I've had Wayfarers for a while, um, actually the smaller one, and they're actually too small. These are the traditional, I think 55 five or 54 millimeter wide ones. Um, one thing I've been experimenting with was silicone nose pads and my brother told me, well, those aren't gonna work. They're gonna, the adhesive eventually is gonna melt and just from your sweat and oil, it's gonna dissolve it and they're gonna slide down. It's like, yeah, you were right. And I was like, I knew that, but it was just a stopgap measure because one of the things I found was that the glasses tend to, to slide off and, or slide down a little bit. And I'm kind of anal about that. And so the, the nose pads did help, it, they were discreet, but eventually like my brother, was right, it gets gummed up and they start slipping off and whatever. So then I upgraded, not upgraded, but I added these um, little rubber tabs, which I had for other glasses. And I frankly didn't like them for other glasses, but for these actually it works perfect. So uh, I tried these ear hook things, uh, silicone ear hooks, which are great for sports because it, the hooks actually, they're not technically hooks, they're more like arms. And they kind of push against the back of your ear and keeps this tension on your on your glasses, and they would, you, that is the killer app for using these as a sport glass for like riding. I'm a cyclist, um, but for day to day use, these little buttons are work great. And the problem with the ear hooks is you kind of gotta push them over your ear and then flip the, the the leg behind your ear to get it to work. I was kind of trying to hope I could kind of like fish them over my ear. Sometimes it works, sometimes it drags, and I still got to fix it. This, it just slides right on. And that said, when, when you slide these on, it, the, the sensor automatically picks up the fact, it's probably a light sensor that picks up the fact that the glasses are on because it, it's, it's not really detecting that you're wearing them, but it's just you're covering up the, the light sensor. And which is nice. I don't know how much more I can tell you about that feature. Um, the only downside is like you hear it when you're taking glasses off, just, you know, day-to-day -day adjustments is kind of annoying to hear. You know, the problem, the, the glass is telling you they're, they're on and they're active. Um, not a big deal. Uh, what else? Camera quality is really good. It's surprisingly good for 1080p and such a tiny little sensor in daylight. 
it's perfect. Um, the one thing that most people point out is framing shots. You, when you wear these, you have to be conscious of looking down further at what you're looking at. This morning I made a video about poaching micro microwave to poach eggs, and I'm looking at the eggs as I'm um, plating them on the, the, the toast, and when I looked back at the, the replay, and I specifically looked down, um, further down than I normally would, and it still wasn't, wasn't good enough. Good thing is you can crop the image, and uh, but that's the only thing is, is that you have to adjust what you're looking at, especially if you're filming something very specific, like, like in your point of view. Your point of view when you wear these and filming it is now going to be several degrees further down. Not a big deal, trial and error. Um, but for like taking it, a picture of something, um, it's got a relatively wide angle of view. Granted, it's a square-ish image. Uh, but if you're like Costco and I see a deal that I want to remember what the price is or whatever the details, uh, I got to remember to get closer to the, to the item. Uh, I take a picture of it and I get a lot of the, the field of view. Um, then I have to zoom in and it gets a little bit grainy. So if I really want to see like a sign or whatever it says, I need to get up really close to it. Not really close to it, but close enough where it's, it's up in my face. And so when the camera captures, captures the image, it'll pick that up. Um, yeah, again, like shopping at Costco, uh, another day-to-day -day thing is, and you can just ask at stupid prompts about something you're looking at. Um, but that's the beauty of these glasses. It, like, again, it gets you, you know, AI is getting so much penetration now in our daily lives. It's just exponentially. And this is, this is why I got these is to get my foot into the pond and get, get my feet wet into AI. Uh, I, I, I like them. I would buy them again in a heartbeat. They, um, the software iterations, they're on seven now, just keep getting better and better and better. The glass case <clears throat> that I dropped is hecka convenient. Um, still in great shape. The only thing I noticed was there's a couple scratches on the outside of the temple piece. I don't know if you can see them. Right. It's right in front of the button towards the front of the glass. Of course, got my hands. It's like right there. I think that's just from sliding it down into the very soft suede-like interior of the case. And that's what the case looks like. It's a really premium case. I think people have pointed that out, like how nice this is. Um, it's just like the one you get when you buy Ray-Ban glasses, kind of old school plasticky, um, pebbled vinyl, but it's iconic if you have a pair of Ray-Ban glasses. Um, so that's what you're used to. I've got black cases, but I think my couple of pairs are in this brown color. And when you put the glasses in here, the light, um, the light starts, starts to glow and charge. Battery life is is decent. Um, I just need to be conscious. We were in, we we were in New York, um, and I just had to recharge them every once in a while, and not a big deal. The I just keep my the case in my backpack and just take them out and, and drop it in whenever we stop and we're indoors. That said, the transitions I like them. I like them a lot. Um, it's just convenient to have you know, glasses that you can basically leave on. And my trip to New York was a great, great example. Just left them on, go went in and out, um, no problem. And it's fast enough for me. And they're legit transition lenses. And, um, you know, that's about as OG and uh, as OG as you're going to get as far as transition lens, lenses. Um, oh, so here again, we'll, we'll do a, the reason why I use this mic with the boom is to show you um, what it sounds like when you ask it a prompt. So I'm going to ask it a prompt. I'm going to ask it, I'll do the haiku thing. I just like that because it's like, if you're ever in a spot, like 
<laughs> you have to, you're in school or something, you have to come up with a haiku or something where you're like, have to be creative on the spot with words. This is like the killer app. Hey Meta, can you create a haiku about delivering UPS packages? Please complete your request about the haiku topic. Hey Meta, can you make me a haiku about delivering UPS packages? Here's a haiku about delivering UPS packages. Brown truck down the street. Packages brought to your door. Delivery delight. Not bad, huh? The only reason why I have that uh, in my mind is because I'm literally looking at a, pa a package right in front of me. Um, <laughs> a silly use of it, sure. But it's just one of these things where that's the beauty of AI. It's like finding uses for that and um, in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, here's another one. I'm in my home gym. Hey, Meta, can you give me a workout plan for a sprinter? To create a workout plan for a sprinter, please specify the sprinter's event, e.g. 100 meters, 400 meters, and their current fitness level. That's pretty good. Hey, Meta. Can you give me a workout plan for a 100-meter track and field sprinter that's very fit? Here's a brief workout plan for a 100-meter track and field sprinter. Warm up with 15 to 20 minutes of jogging and stretching, followed by 3 to 5 sets of 30 to 90-meter sprints at maximum effort, with 2 to 3 minutes rest in between sets, and finish with 10 to 15 minutes of cool-down stretching. That's pretty good. It's pretty specific. Um, and it's a great blueprint for, in my mind, you, I would probably, probably increase the rest interval, but that's pretty good. Um, anyway, enough about the glasses. Thanks for watching. I'll try to do another follow-up. But like I said, I've had these for a while. like them a lot. Oh, what I will do, uh, mention is uh, speaker quality and microphone quality. Great. It is so convenient to listen to podcasts with these. Um, and with like in like Costco, like, you know, I'm walking around and, and, and if I'm listening to a podcast before I go in, I, like the other day I did this, I just was continuing a, a Tim Ferriss podcast and just having a pipe in your ear. Um, that's what I love about them. I don't ride with these. Um, and the reason why I'm mentioning that is I have bone conduction headphones, shocks, uh, Apple AirPods, Pro, which I, you know, I don't like having stuff in my ear. Just, you know, I'm situationally aware. I've got Garmin radar, all this other stuff. But my preferred way of listening to music or whatever while I'm exercising or riding is a, the speaker in the, my jersey pocket, my phone speaker in my jersey pocket. And, um, but that said, my next choice would be to listen to music or podcast with these while exercising because you are situationally aware. You can hear almost everything. Um, I'll only use my AirPods if I'm cutting the grass because, okay, it's good noise cancellation um, and I can hear things. These is impossible because the sound of the lawnmower drowns it out. Um, but, yeah, um, <clears throat> that's I should have, been, should have mentioned that. It's like these are great media consumption devices. Um, you know, I thought about if they ever did a video overlay of these, I, I, I don't see the point of that, um, especially when phones are so ubiquitous and they're just, they're usually right there by your hip. And uh, I just love the simplicity of these. It keeps the price down low enough in the $350 mark or less if you don't want the transitions um, to where you really don't need a video overlay. That just adds this level of complexity like Google Glasses that it's just unnecessary. And with these, you see someone, it is funny, okay, and that's it. And Google Glasses, you've seen, as soon as you saw someone's like, yeah, that, that guy's got Google Glasses, um, which kind of killed that product. And, and that said, with these, back to my New York trip, these glasses that I've been only at, been out for, I think, since Christmas time or something. Um, and I was shocked in Manhattan. I, mean, I, I was all over that island, with the exception of Harlem. And never saw anyone with them. And in fact, um, when I was on that trip, I was in 
no, Italy. And someone asked me, hey, bro, are those the Meta Wayfair glasses? And I think only one or two people asked me the entire trip there. And I said, yeah. And so, yeah, I you know, invariably talked to them about it. Um, but even that said, I still, now I think about it, have not seen anyone with these glasses, which is kind of crazy. But I do get glances at people that kind of like either they're looking at me or at least I'm self-conscious about it. I don't know. And they're like, hey, those are the glasses, but they don't want to ask. And that's good. And that's good. It's like they're not, they're more modest than me where I would ask them, hey, total stranger, are those the uh, Wayfair, the meta Wayfair glasses? Uh, but that said, I still haven't seen very a lot of them. And I honestly like, haven't seen any. Uh, I need to get out more or they're just not around as much. And I don't understand that. Um because it's a great product. And again, it checks all the boxes for me. It's it does everything that I asked it to, I wanted it to do. Everything I asked it to do as, as far as I had internet connection, they've surpassed my expectations and it's totally worth the 350 bucks or whatever I paid for them. So, I'm sure I'm missing something cuz these videos of mine are completely unscripted and um but yeah, those are the bullet points and things that are in my mind. Um, I, I, I like them. Give them a shot.